this is for you. Black ink. This is my morning coming to work. In the meantime, I'm gonna um. going to record um, some footage for my YouTube channel. Alright, this video is uh, going to be about Bitcoin mining, uh, I mean Bitcoin mining slash Ethereum mining, Zcash mining, uh, you name it, uh, Litecoin mining. Uh, doggy coin. I mean, there's thousands and thousands of coins that people mine, and I've been mining since 2013 consistently. Where others stop because of um, you know competition being so fierce. I've been continuously mining, I never stopped a day uh, of mining. Uh, I learned a lot, a lot of stuff doing mining. I mean. This video is not to tell people to get into mining. This video is not to sell you anything. Uh, this video is just about uh, people who heard about mining, want to know what it is. I mean, mining is basically a whole bunch of distributed network computers running and processing your transactions, kind of like a bank, but. Uh, Nobody controls that bank. I mean, they're all over the world. Um, the idea is really cool, uh, but of course, with like any business, greed and people um, get into it, and there are more and more people, and then the big companies get into it, and they they have big mining farms. Uh, what they do is literally uh, have a lot of high-end computers running in a big uh, warehouse with a lot of power and they ba basically uh, mine uh, all these coins and they put pressure on the little miners kind of like you know big business versus uh, mama papa, like walmart versus um, mama papa shop you know no way you're gonna be able to compete against that uh, they pay less for electricity, they pay less for uh, what you call uh, uh, space. Uh, they also, uh, when they're buying in quantity, they pay less for the mining machines or setup. And I mean, it's a very you know competitive uh, business. Uh, a lot of mining farms go out of business too. So it's not like saying that you know, I mean, anybody. Uh, so you want to have the least expensive electricity. I mean, I mean, it's not easy to find that. Uh, my electricity cost uh, has always been like uh, 12 cents uh, per kilowatt. Uh, so that's uh, pretty good, but not great. I mean, it's uh, I've seen electricity cost from like three cents all the way up. Somebody pays even uh, over 25 cents per kilowatt. So I mean, all. What it means to you is um, that will that will decide how uh, profitable your mining uh, business is going to be. So, I mean, electricity is one cost, but the other cost of mining is um, uh, what you call um, equipment cost. Uh, plus, of course, it takes uh, skills, your time. So, time, money, and those two things are pretty much going to decide how much time you put in there and how do you know how long it'll be profitable. I mean, how do you know how many people are going to get into it? It's kind of like any business. If you knew there'll be 10 chevrons opening in the same block. Would you open another chevron? Don't know. But um, of course it's like anything else. It's basically uh, a business. So you have to take some risk. So I've been successfully mining for since 2013 and I just heard about it. Nobody tried to get me into mining. I just uh, heard about it when I was building a computer. I was wanted to have, you know, every four or five years I upgrade my computers 
and this was something I overheard somebody say because they just like commented uh, like oh you get mining right and I said what is mining uh, and then from there on I read into it and I literally got a lot of time and energy and money invested in it but the whole idea of mining is not just because uh, you know you want to it's it's very uh, very rewarding at the same time it, it changes really quickly kind of like a daily trader uh, it's more like it's not only you're doing uh, daily trading stocks wise you also building computers you are uh, you are making sure your internet works you're making sure your electricity is good you are constantly upgrading your uh, uh, electricity connections you know you're doing all kind of stuff it's not just one little thing so I mean I have gone as far as uh, three phase power uh, and I have used those big uh, uh, three phase to 220 uh, two phase power. Uh, I'm forgetting what it's called. Distribution block. Uh, whatever you want to call it, the power distribution. So, uh, um, yeah, I done all my wiring myself. So I'm pretty good uh, with uh, learning. Uh, and I mean, I'm. I'll be honest. I was scared. So uh, when you have a uh, three phase power it's not like your home power you literally have a uh, total of like uh, what 480 volts coming in uh, on three different lines uh, there's way you can wire and then you convert it to 220 so normal house can only do 220 volts per volt uh, but if you run a power supply on 220 volts it's much more efficient so that's why it, uh, you know would recommend running in 220. A lot of people run their power supplies at uh, 110, which is okay, but it's not as efficient. So you get a little bit extra efficiency out of that uh, your power. Uh, what else is there? You will have a um, whole bunch of computers running, and when whenever you have a lot of computers running, you will have also a lot of heat. So you have to know how to dissipate all that heat. So what happens is, um, you, I mean, you know, some people think they can put it in their house, and I mean, even now uh, there are people who are running mining computers in their apartments, houses, and they're miserable. I mean, they don't know a lot about electricity, how um, circuits work, uh, so they run an extension card. So they have a wiring mess. You're, you're basically creating a um, uh, logical um, scenario for some kind of fire issue hazard. <laughs> so, extension parts are okay for temporary use, not really good for uh, running, uh, you know, continuously that much power through them. And all extension cards have different gauges. I mean, what happens when you run a lower gauge extension card uh, and you continuously draw so much power, uh, like, you know, 13, 12, 13, 14, 15 amps at 110, it runs hotter. So what happens, I mean, I'm literally uh, uh, seeing cards just melt. With the heat, when the insulation melts, then the conductor is short and that can cause fire smoke fire so you don't want to ever tax your gauges of fire then the more uh, they're rated for so you need to know uh, one thing you should invest in is kilowatt meter I mean that will tell you exactly how much power you're drawing how many amps you're drawing and uh, you I mean, all extension cards have a rating on how many amps you can draw through them. So, you know, the more expensive ones, of course, have a higher gauge wire. And the less expensive ones are actually uh, lower gauge wire. So, gauges of, uh, on the wires or extension cards are very important. Pay a lot of attention if you want to get into mining. Also, um, 
peak cost for computers. I mean, yes, you can buy fancy motherboards, you can buy most expensive uh, processor, you don't need that, all that stuff for mining. So, what you need is really the best video cards for mining. I mean, I've done basic mining, I've done uh, video card mining, I've mined different coins. Um, currently mining, uh, uh, and they run. I mean, once you build a good system and you're not taxing it, it will work. I mean, very minimal, um, and you can monitor that stuff, so it's not hard. The only problem right now is a lot of people are getting into it with a lot more investment into this than they can get out. That's not what you want to do. I mean, yes, mining is profitable, but then when a lot of people get into it, difficulty goes up and the profitability goes down. So then what happens? Uh, then I've seen cycles where people had no use for their hardware. They sold it. I was still mining. Uh, I was finding the most profitable coin and mining it uh, just to keep my ass. I didn't care if I made money or not. As long as I was able to pay my electricity. I just kept doing it. And then all of a sudden, boom, everybody uh, realized the profit we went up. And then I had my hardware sitting around. I didn't have to do much, but still mining. So all I did was literally continued mining. And um, uh, I had, you know, the time that it takes big companies to get back into the business, uh, I was mining and I was profitably mining. So, I mean, that was a good thing. So, I mean, it's kind of like, yeah, when you open your grocery store or, you know, your shop, uh, you know, if you're going to open a new business, it's going to take some time to set it up. Uh, if you already have a shop and cust customers start coming in, then, you know, you're going to be making money right away. So not all businesses are running profitably uh, all year long. I mean, there are seasons, like for example, if you are into uh, 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 you know, holiday cards, you know, calendar club, calendar business, they don't know on season when, you know, people buy those things. Uh, so some, some businesses only open up and, in seasons and close down, like for example, concession stands, food mart, you know, fairs and summer things. Uh, not not really winter thing. So you 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 have to you have to be able to run your business. And the way you be able to do it is if your cost is down. Now I rented a location, and that's where the sweep space. It was an industrial location. It had sweep space power, and I was mining over there. But after that rent and the expenses. I was paying the same as I was paying at home, even though electricity was cheaper, but there was a cost for renting that location. It wasn't free. So there's always a cost factor to all these things. It's not like, uh, you know, you can, you can scale your uh, mining farm to be able to uh, do whatever size. You have to, you know, if you have a big place and a lot of power and you don't have a lot of machines, uh, you still have to pay the rent. I mean, whatever the rent is, it could be $500, could be $5,000, but you're going to be paying for that, and there will be also a minimum electricity bill, so you can't just, and you're leasing, so you're not really going to be able to just, uh, um, you know, if it's not profitable anymore, you can't just skip that. So some people, uh, like, uh, open these big warehouses, and then they basically rent that space. Uh, but then again, like any rental business, if somebody doesn't see they're making money, they will get out. So you, you're still responsible for that location. You still have to pay. So you have to somehow uh, be able to cover your expenses. And the way mining is, you don't know that. Uh, so I didn't get too big. I got into the little space. And I had scaled back when the mining wasn't very profitable and I didn't want to invest any more money into it. Uh, so. I literally cashed out and I moved, scaled back to my home again and I, you know, I run
not in my garage. It works really uh, efficiently um, if I want to uh, move it in my uh, rooms for heat purposes. So like, I didn't have to run a heater in winter time because I had mining generating enough heat to heat my house. I mean, it's, it got to a uh, what 15 degrees, and I didn't feel the feel the weather at all because it was warm and crispy inside my house uh, without any heater. I mean, sometimes I had to leave the window open just to get some cool air come in and uh, regulate the temperature inside. Uh, but yeah, mining is really uh, challenging. A lot of people like to get into mining, so they don't understand it and they spend thousands and thousands of dollars because they look at something uh, now is profitable. Doesn't mean it's going to be profitable later on. They don't understand the uh, variables involved in mining, and they get into it. So that's why I'm saying it's not the media for you to go in mining. This is just to explain what my experience is. And on my commute, so I'm not doing anything, uh, you know, at work or anything like that. This is actually just going to work. I'm sharing my knowledge with you about Bitcoin, ASICs. Um, uh, GPU mining, Ethereum, Zcash, all that stuff. Uh, Bitcoin mining got so competitive that people uh, stopped using GPUs. And that same thing can happen to Ethereum or any other coin if there's enough profitability for big businesses to start making a uh, ASICs or stuff like that. Like they make coins that are harder to mine for reason of not having um, uh, big companies get into it because they want to have such a cost associated with it that it's not easy to mass produce those miners because if you do then what happens is that uh, uh, then you get a lot of big companies into it they want to make it so it's difficult but right now there's a lot of big companies investing in GPUs so they are like uh, uh, mining farms uh, uh, Genesis, I believe there's one mining farm that uh, they found the cheapest place in Poland or you know, where it's very cold and cheap electricity uh, and they're mining with their um, huge farm, they're adding huge amount of GPUs. I mean, these companies are buying so many GPUs that currently there's a shortage of GPUs. You can't find a good graphic card for uh, you know, building your computers. So that's how much they're investing in it. What will you think will happen when the mining is not as profitable? Of course, they're going to be, uh, uh, yeah, of course, they're going to be basically uh, uh, selling those video cards online. So the video card price will drop. Right now, it's very expensive to get a video card that you can mine with because these companies are buying as much as they can they think it's like a uh, you know best way to get into this so I mean they they're investing in the hardware right now they know eventually there will be different coins coming in they will be mining they're thinking like I'm thinking like it's money is now not, never gonna go away it's gonna be there and invest in the hardware and maybe sell you know try to just keep up in the business so they can you know profit when the time is right and when the time is not right, they can just maintain their expenses. So that was that video. That's the end. I have to go to work. Thank you for uh, watching my video. And if you subscribe, I really appreciate it. That helps me keep making more videos. Thank you very much. And talk to you later.